this rational graph is probably going to be the most cumbersome, covering everything that we've done, basically. A little bit of everything going on here in this problem. So let's start like we always do by factoring the numerator and the denominator. That way we can find our domain, the denominator equaling 0 at x equaling negative 1 and at positive 1. So negative infinity to negative 1, negative 1 to positive 1, and 1 to infinity. Now when we look though, we can see that the denominator cancels out for x plus 1, meaning that x equals negative 1 has to be a whole, and x equaling positive 1 then would have to be a vertical asymptote. Intercepts next. X-intercept, set the numerator equal to 0. Make sure we use all parts of the factored equation and canceled equation. So we have 0 comma 0 for when x equals 0, and then 3 comma 0 for x minus 3 equaling 0. For y-intercept, we should plug 0. Again, I like using my uh, original equation. It means we have a y-intercept also of 0 comma 0, which should make sense. If you have an x-intercept at the origin, it's also a y-intercept at the crossroads. All that's left to go is the horizontal and slant asymptote. I know that's going to be a slant asymptote because my numerator has a higher degree than my denominator. So my long division should yield something with an x, and there it does. So my horizontal asymptote is the part in front of the remainder. So y equaling x plus 2. And again, that's our slant asymptote, not our horizontal asymptote, because there is an x there. We uh, notice real quick uh, before we go on, I used the factored equation, the easier equation here in my long division. That was easier to use just because I have less going on. If you'd use the original, that's fine. That's not a huge deal. We just have to be careful, uh, especially when we get to this crossing portion, because when does the remainder equal zero in that equation? Well, two never equals zero. It doesn't cross. If you had used the original uh, equation, uh, my guess is that you would get something like x plus one as your remainder. Well, if you said x plus one equal to zero, you would have gotten x equals negative one, which is a whole. It can't possibly happen. So you have to do a little bit of extra analysis thinking that way uh, if you use the original. Always easier just to use uh, what you're given with the factored equation instead. So we got just about everything in this problem. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. No horizontal asymptote, but the slant asymptote is x plus 2. So starting at positive 2 and going up 1 over 1 is your slant asymptote. And we have a hole at x equals 1. We need to find what that y value is, though. So again, the reason, or the way to find uh, where your y value is, take this negative 1 and plug it into your factored equation. So you'll get negative 1 times negative 4 all over negative 2. So negative 4 over, uh, I'm sorry, positive 4 over negative 2 is going to give you a value of negative 2. So negative 1 comma negative 2 will be where your hole is. Let's get a better open circle there. Uh, we still have the y-intercept there. And we have another x-intercept here at positive 3. So we need to try to connect the dots on all of these. Well, the only way that you're going to be able to do that is if you have going up against this vertical asymptote and then curling back down and following the horizontal asymptote that way. Over here, the only way that you can follow the asymptotes is something like that. So there's what your graph would look like. And in this case, we don't even have to guess and check because of the fact that we had points on both sides of your vertical asymptote. And take a look and make sure you have one, two, three portion of your domain, we have one, two, three portions of your graph then to work with in solving this problem. The domain at the end, you start with the domain, you end with the domain, that's how you know you have the right graph.